This is a short video on how you can build your own PSN box instead of buying the a PSN's compatible router. We recommended in a previous video the SG1100. Again, no affiliation with uh, with those guys, but we like it. But let's say that you don't want to buy it. You have an idle and use PC that you want to use, and you want to build your own. So this video is all about sharing what Leopoldo Aguirre, our friend Polo, learned from this process so you, it can be smoother in your case. So he did it with the Lenovo, what is that, uh, a Lenovo S10 or something like that, uh, a seven or eight year old PC. So you don't need a lot of hardware for this. This PC had one Ethernet adapter and he used that for what is going to be or what it, what it is actually his one port. Okay, remember that with PFSense you have one, one port, you have a LAN port and you have an OPT one port. This was the one used for the IoT devices, this was the one used for the secure devices. So what Polo did was actually he used two Ethernet, well actually USB to gigabit is called, these you know, adapters that are USB on one side, gigabit Ethernet on the other and he built that and in fact this is completely expandable so let's say that you want to have three LANs instead of just two well you add another adapter and you can have OPT2 which you cannot do with the SG1100 SG because it only has LAN and OPT so again it can work for for both processes now lessons learned Polo use adapters of the brand name Sabrent. They also go by ASICs. The important thing is that the whatever adapter you buy make sure that it has the support for the real tech device drivers. The reason for that is that, as you know, PSN is a free BSD or runs on free BSD and free BSD has native support for the drivers for real tech devices. Now these devices will be shown in the operating system as UE, like USB Ethernet 0, this will be U Ethernet 1 and so on, right? The uh, network adapter that Polo has in his old PC by coincidence is also a Realtek, supports Realtek uh, uh, device drivers and it comes internally as RE0, right? Now, in the NetGate forums, Polo found that there were some people saying that this schema does not work, that even though it seems to be working in the beginning, it has some stability problems. And certainly Polo saw some of that until he migrated to version 2.4 patch 3, which was available in May, in May, I believe. That is for the PFSense software. Okay, and because that's the one available today, that's the one that you should start. And Polo has been running his environment for, I would say, a month and a half, and he has not experienced any other problems. So this seems to work very well. Now, how do you put into your old PC 
the operating system, the FreeBSD that drags alone uh, your PFSense. And for that, I think that the best thing for you to do is to go to this site, pfsense.org slash downloads. And as you see, that's the current version that we have, 2.4.4 patch 3. You select the architecture AMD because it's not a NetGay device. And in the installer, you select the memory sticks. And for the console, he selected VGA. And you choose a mirror and you download that code. Now, if you are not familiar with booting from a USB stick, you can actually go into this site, you can actually see the URL there, where they really walk you step by step on all the processes that you need to go. Verify the integrity of the, of the, of the download if you want to do that, and then you click Next. And it shows you this is really pretty much the same. Now, this is how you connect the USB mem stick where you downloaded that uh, code into the actual PC, how you clean it up in, in the different operating systems. So it really does a good job of walking you step by step. My guess is that if you are inclined to actually do this, uh, Obviously, you're not going to do a DVD these days. I don't know why they even put this in here. But if you're going to be doing this, it's because you are familiar with these, uh, you know, hardware, low-level booting type of uh, things, right? But if not, if you are you want to try it, then you can actually learn by following these instructions. Polo also asked me to share two tips. When you are doing this process, of course, this is my physical PFSense, the HG1100, but it's the same software. So if you want to see when the system boots to make sure that the right mic address are assigned to LAN uh, 1, OPT 1, etc., what you need to do is go into Diagnostic, Edit File, and in here, click on their browse and the logs of the system will be like any Unix system on the bar log and here there are two files that you may want to see and I'm not going to display them because I don't want to reveal my MAC addresses because they will be uh, seen in here this is one the message boot and in there you can see the right uh, MAC addresses that were assigned to every one of the interfaces and the other one is uh, system logs okay so you may want to take a look at these files when the system boot to understand how your process is actually going should you experience any problem with the assignment of the interfaces you go here on the interface assignments and in my case they are physical uh, of the of the SG1100, but in yours you will see the MAC addresses in here that were assigned to every one of your devices. I hope that you, if you feel inclined to try this out, I hope that this is another way in which you can make your home network be your lab for learning cybersecurity, unloading Curate RCE, learning all the things that we have on, on the PFSense and if you go to the box link who's on the box folder whose link is in the video description of all of my videos in it you'll find this file which is the latest version with links to all the files and as you can see the section of PSMs keeps growing with all these things that you can easily learn at your place at home while making your home network more secure now with the option of building your hardware should you prefer that route.